Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Admiral Pegasus and on today's show we are going to be discussing the Zindi in the Delphic Expanse and also looking at the expansion to the Xborg Faction Store. But before all that, if you'd like to know when I'm dropping videos or going live, please subscribe to the channel. So, January 2024 sees the introduction of the Enterprise Arc Part 1 and the Delphic Expanse joins us. Now, you can see the Delphic Expanse here is attached next to the Cardassian space. That's because in our galaxy, for some reason, it was plonked here and it's 200 years after the um, the mission, the season three of Enterprise. For the full story, I recommend checking out this particular mission, Binding Timelines, parts one through 10. It will go through the entire story arc for you. Um, it's actually an interesting read. I do, I, I did actually read it this time round. So, but hey ho. Now, when we was also introduced to this art, we was told, or should we say, the NDA content creators like Rev and DJ, that were told this was going to be a five minute arc. We will attempt to answer that question if it's going to be a five minute um, job or it's not. But we'll have to wait and see. Now, I will hopefully get through this without too much of an issue. As you can see, I've got scanning on the screen. I'm really having problems with um, lag at the minute, which is not very good. But let's start off with um, the fate, the expansion to the Xborg faction store. And obviously, you're going to find it in your factions. And here we go. So, originally, when the store opened at Ops 38, you had the Stellar Efficiency, Mantis, Botany Bay, Defiant, Meridian, and Talios Efficiencies. Basically, all these were just basically helping you with the grind of older content, like the Meridian, just basically giving you a pile of isogen. It's, it's not even a day's worth now for me at Ops 47, but when I was down at Ops 42, it definitely was a day's worth. It is subject to the tier of your um, of your specific ships. As you can see there, the Talios, it says uh, 7 to 11. And the Defiant also says 7 to 11. And so does the Mantis. So it is based on the tier of your ship. Lower end of the tier, yes. But higher end of the tier, no, it's not even a day's worth. But anyway, that being said... So when you got to Ops 40 then, you're also going to have Voyager, Fischer and Monovine added too. Basically just help you along with those particular loops because they are obviously within the last 12 months. And so they are relatively recent and yeah, they also want to try and help you through those grounds a little bit more. But that's not the bread and butter of this extension. No, we also have... Uh, three new currencies added. Well, actually, there's about one, two, three. I think there's about six currencies in total. But the primary three that you're going to find is the Xborg credits. And now we, instead of just having the originals, we've got uncommon, we've got rares, and we've got epics. Woohoo! Now, as you can see here, we've got the words trade down. That basically means the image that you can see is what you will get. And basically, it's going to cost the next level up. If we take the rare, for example, you, what you'll notice is that I have to pay epic credits to convert into rares. And then rares will convert into uncommons. Uncommons will uh, convert into the commons. So they are guaranteed pulls, but it is, you just saw the cost. That's what you've got. Now, there are other chests as well in here as well. We'll talk about the Zindi Scrap Exchange in just a moment because that is a, that's the one you really, really need at current. But you've got things like the Zindi Bounty Bundle Exchange, which is basically giving you the option for some more credits, but it is level locked behind the, sorry, reputation locked behind esteemed. So you do need to work your way up. But to be perfectly honest, this one, may give you a better option of um, rare and epic credits. Because I can tell you now, the other one that we've got, which is the scrap exchange, yeah, we'll cover that in just a minute. Material exchange and ship parts exchange, similar to that of the um, Bajoran faction store. However, don't, just don't. The returns of them are ridiculous. Although for the materials, it and the broken ship pass, it'll probably be a great source of broken and raw, uh, broken pass and raw materials. But if you're actually looking at things like your commons, uncommons, rares, and epics, and whatever, yeah, really don't count on it in all honesty. 
Uh, ship fuel ability, uh, another one. Yeah, just just don't. You see me pull it, that was in the last uh, attempt to record this video. Overnight, that's all I got. There's four options in there and you only get one. Yeah. So, next up is the officer exchange, which is your Voyager sourcing. We all know how ridiculously crap the sourcing for Voyager is. Having to do the rare formation minus of basically completely reliant on your alliance to help you with that one. Now, you can do it yourself, but again, locked behind the steamed. I wish I could get rid of this green screen so you could actually see it easier. But it's going to cost you rare credits to do. What the pull's like, I don't know. I'm hoping they're a hell of a lot better than what we actually got in the um, artifact gallery. <clears throat> but speaking of artifacts, artifact hall, that's going to give us some of the tokens, the originals, the premiums, and the isolytics. So you can pull your isolytic... Uh, oh, I forgot to... I keep saying that. Pull your artifact shards. I keep saying isolytic shards. But anyway, next up is the faction exchange. Another bleh, one, because literally... It's either a set amount of faction, a reputation for each faction, or credits. What you're going to get, you really don't know. Obviously, we'll see these when I do hit ex um, esteemed, and hopefully I'll have some rare credits. So what I'll do is I'll do a video showing the pulls on these ones. For the bidden technology, is a little bit more valuable because it does have some stuff that you actually do need in there. Um, it's locked behind venerated, and it is going to need the rare credits as well. Um, G4 Mega Chest, now there is a G5 and a G6 respectively. Um, another source of materials, again, don't know what the RNG is going to be because to be perfectly honest, eyes are missing. Yes, they've not put, they've not actually told us what the roles are going to be. And then the style exchange, take it as you want, really, just, just, yeah. Now, in the Mega Chest as well, what you will also find, I forgot to mention this quickly is dolomide particles so this chest does have some value but like i said it's going to cost you the epic credits so just watch out for that one what your pulls and rng is basically going to be around these um is not very high so just bear that in mind so now we're getting down to the good stuff i'm not going to bother with the frame and the halo frequency if you want it crack on um there is one favour that is not here because I got it on day one, and that is the particle beam delay. This is what this is a favour that you absolutely must do upon getting to level 40. As soon as you've got access to this, get it. It will cost the original export credits. It's cheap as chips. I am not gonna lie, it is cheap as chips. Levels 1 and 2 you can do with the original export credits. Level 3, however, is locked behind the uncommons. However, there is a quick way of doing it. If you've done the level 40 mission in part 1, which is um, United Again, part 1, it will pay out a 1,000 uncommon export credits. So basically, all you'll need to do is find another 90, which you will get from your um, scraps exchange, which we will look at in a, again in a minute. But that particle delay is your top, first, primary, however you want to call it, it is the first thing you go for. If you can max it out to level 3, spot on, do it. If you can only go as far as level 2, spot on, do it. It doesn't matter how high you can go, just do it. So, now, we have two contenders for second place in these favours. Critical Damage Floor and Zindi Escalation. Now... In all honesty, these do not pay out much, and we will look at all that in just a moment. They don't pay out very much, um, so you are basically going to need something like the Zindi Escalation. As you can see, I'm up to level 3, if I can just get it to click. <clears throat> so basically, means whatever they drop, whatever crew I run, I'm going to get 75% extra. So for every 100 scraps... I'm going to get a I'm going to get another 75 on top, so it's going to give me a total of 175. Obviously, maxing out at 200 when you get it to level five. So for every 100 I get, I'm going to have another 200 added on top, giving me a total of 300. This for me is a very strong contender for second place because trust me, you are going to need this if you've got any hope of keeping it anywhere near the advertised five minute loop. Okay, yeah. Now, I said there was a second contender, and that's the critical damage floor, because these hostiles, um, we'll discuss this a little bit later in the video, they will re remove your critical damage to the point that you fire nothing. 
it's zero. So this will actually help you. It will help you straight from the get go at level one. Basically giving you just 10% standard damage. Literally, that is it. If you fire a critical shot, it will give you a little bit of damage. It is minuscule. It is, yeah, it's not even worth it. It will become more beneficial and worth it from level four and level five. That's where you can have it. So this is why I said this is a strong contender for second place. However, this starts straight off with uncommon credits and it's not cheap. Whereas the Zindi Escalation, however, starts off at the original export credits, which means you can get level one straight away. The next two levels are uncommon. Obviously, over the last few days, I've had just enough uncommon to actually get it up to level three. But obviously, I'll be working on, for me personally, I will be working on Zindi Escalation, get that maxed, then do the critical damage floor. Because to be honest, at the minute, I don't really need critical damage floor. In all honesty, I really don't need it. But that's me. So, you, your, your opinion could be completely different. So, right. So, like I said, very strong contender for second place. So, you've got them too. Um, next up um, in contendership, I will say, is going to be these, sorry, assembly lines. Reducing the cost efficiency for G4 and G5 parts for your ship components. Absolutely, you really do need to look at reducing it. Um... If we actually quickly look on the chart here about how low they go. As you can see, I do have level 1. That is all export faction credits. So any one that you can see highlighted across the side is already what you can buy via export credit store. Um, the original export credits. So reducing those amount of parts that you need is beneficial. And it will work from common parts right through to epic parts. So... Hang on, sorry, rare parts, because we don't have epic parts. Um, but yeah, absolutely strong contenders to go into fourth place. Um, just spread them out as you see fit. Obviously, work on the one with the ship that you're specifically working on. Battleships will work better towards your Borg Cube and your Monovine. I'm hesitant to say the Mantis, but it is you do sort of like need the Mantis now when it comes to the new wave defense. Explorers, things like your Voyager... Um, your Titan, your Cerritos. So yes, I am using the specialties as examples. But your big one is definitely going to be the Interceptor one for your Talios and your Defiant. Two big ships in the game, in all honesty. Voyager is obviously an explorer. Me, I've already got mine to tier 7, one component short. But I need to be Ops 51 to actually send it, do that component. So for me, the Explorer one's not really valuable. I'm not working on any Explorers anymore. My Valdor's as far as it's going to go. So I don't need to worry about that one until I get to G5. And then just smash it out overload. When I finally work, go to work on an Explorer, that is. But anyway, so there is that one. Um, near the right at the bottom, in fact, the most worthless one for me, in my opinion... Now, higher level players, you'll most likely have a different opinion on this one, is the pure Axionic Servos. Now, yes, I've got it because it's under the original export credits, as you can see, level 2 is as well. But what this will do is basically for your Exocom factory is reduce the amount of Exocom, uh, amount of Axionic Servos, sorry, you need to upgrade the building. I already have enough to go from 46 to 48. However, my R&D is stopping me from going to 48. Because it's still stuck at 46 and I'm struggling to get those rare gas because I'm too busy doing research. Research, research, research. That's the key of the game. But yeah, so to me, my opinion, ex Exionic Servos, right down at the bottom. Um, choice materials and choice resources, reducing the cost of... Um, incre in bleh, increasing the cost efficiency of them two respectively. Yeah, absolutely. I probably... Uh, for those of you who are... Adamant on working on your base over your ships, you can put it over the ship parts in all honesty. So for those rushing through the levels, why you really want to rush through, does you, you gain nothing by shooting through levels, in my opinion. But you want to I tell you what, you want to shoot through the game and miss out a lot, a lot, then crack on. That's your choice. So these will definitely be worth it for you. So that's pretty much it. You've obviously got some um Favours as well, which work of repairing your ship during combat. Absolutely, yes, definitely after the ship components. You've got PV one, PvP ones that are focused for the PvP players. 
and you've also got some PVE ones as well. So yeah. Also, you've got as you just noticed, well, you've got the combat stratagem increasing your ship XP. Absolutely, me, I will put this one over the repairs any day because I've got a lot of ships I need to level up, and they surprise, surprise, they are miners, and the only place they can actually go to get leveled up without having to be constantly put through combat and me actually fighting is augment space. It's the only place I can put them. However, at 4,000 a kill, when I need to get a couple of million just for one level, yeah, that extra boost will be advantageous for me. So that is the favors basically. Uh, oh, Monovine one gives you uh, increased isolytic damage. So, yeah, and then you got ones for broken parts as well if you really, really wanted to. But that's getting the broken parts off the hostiles. So that is the faction store. Now, before we finish with the faction store, we'll go back up to this one, the Zindi Scrap Exchange. Now, this is where your loop really does start. After you've got the Prime, that, that particle beam delay, and after you've actually started killing. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna build up these scraps, and let's get it up on the screen, and you're gonna bring them to this chest. Now, what you'll see is you're gonna be guaranteed Xbox re reputation, that's nice. From what I understand, and I'm I'm hoping I'm wrong here, but the reputation stays the same no matter what level you are. So, yeah. How long it's going to take to complete it? I've heard the number six months thrown out. Whether it is or not, I do not know. I'll have to wait and see what happens over the next six months. Um, getting enough to make sure that you do this daily is definitely going to be advantageous. If you can do enough for the big pull, I would recommend it. Now, originally, these were not the cost. 2000 9000 500 these were the costs yes because literally the day after i released the originals indie video scopely put this out yeah they made a modification to it to reduce the uh, amount that you needed to try and bring it closer to the five minute grind because a lot of players were saying this is not a five minute grind and it's we'll talk about that later so absolutely worth doing luckily this one has an i button as well so as you can see you are guaranteed to get at least one pull of common and one pull of uncommon credit so this is why doing that particular mission for the um for the level three particle beam delay getting those thousand credits just doing a single pull in here will allow you to actually complete it uh, as you can see rares and epics as well you got chances on not very good in all honesty Day one, I pulled them. The remaining days, I've not actually pulled any, which is a, a pain in the ass, really. So, as you can see, this 145, 265, and 385 on the commons. Uh, 145, 215, 290, and 360 on the uncommons. So, that's what you're going to get. So, this is why I say that mission gives you that 1,000. You come in here, do a pull, you're guaranteed 145. Well, that's 55 more than what you actually need. And then also you can see the rares and epics. Two, two of each, you got 55 and 90, 30 and 40 respectively. So, yeah, okay, not bad. So, that's then. Now, let's look at the ships. Okay, so first of all, looking at Zindi Space, as you can see, we've got three systems here, level 34. These all you can literally see in without a problem once you've actually turned them white. Then from 40 upwards, you have a load of systems under Fog of War. This will all top out at the level 62, which has got a maximum warp range of 1,000. So, yep, a lot of stuff there for a lot, lot to go for. But these 34s definitely start at warp range 50. So you can get in there, send your discovery in, and I'll tell you one thing. The hostiles in here are so easy to complete. So what we're going to quickly look at is um, the system. Um, so here's a 34. The bottom one, as you can see, is half a million. In every single system, you will find battleships, explorers, and interceptors. So crew your ships out um, appropriately. Let me find the correct crew because we're going to need to crew. The 34s will give you one. This is another reason for that Zindi Escalation. Now, I know what you're saying, but I'm going to you need 2,000. You're going to have to do loads of kills. Yes, I am. That Zindi Escalation will allow me to increase this a little bit. If we can just find a 35. And look at it. This one's giving me three. Now, I have been able to get up to five out of this. So, 
yeah, well, but 75% is higher than 66. So, yeah, it makes it an extra two is definitely a given. Um, so, what crew are you going to run? Well, basically, standard PMC. And literally, I'm not going to lie, this is based on research and my current ops level and everything else I've got. But check this out. That is a, a maxed out Orion Corvette. Yeah, with PMC on the bridge. I am not joking you. Now, this, now as you can see, the Zindi still had some hull because this went the full 100 rounds. Yes. So, yeah, I literally did it. You Now, depending on how much strength and how much firepower you can bring in, absolutely. Here's the firing, two firing patterns for them. Battleships and in explorers all have energy weapons and firing one shot every single round each weapon. And then the interceptors got two kinetic and an energy weapon where the kinetics are firing the standard firing pattern of shoot, mi shoot, charge, shoot, charge, sh shoot, charge. I will get it right in a minute. So, um, Pike Moreau, Talon, absolutely. Pike Moreau, Kath, absolutely. Pike Moreau, Chen, absolutely. Bring them in here, just grind it out. So, that's for you low level players. Nice and easy for you to follow. Uh, where's me bloody notes? So, done that one. Don't want that one. I want that one. So, now, is there anything else I've missed on that one? Um, abilities. These have got no ship abilities. Obviously, it's something we've become accustomed to lately. However, 34s, 35s would not have them, but guaranteed you from ops, uh, level 40, they do. So, now, let's actually jump out and jump into one of the level 40s, because obviously, even when you've opened them, you are still going to need a ship in there just to see the system because they are covered under fog of war. Now, these hostiles are a different kettle of fish. And as you can see, for some peculiar reason. This, this is not bolding well, is it? It's saying apparently my discovery is still at home. Oh, for God's sake. But apparently I can't. Now we've all just seen that, right? I've already jumped once and yet I've had to jump again. My Lord. But anyway, now, now we've actually got through that. So basically coming in here, we're going to find these new hostiles. Again, battleships, interceptors and explorers. And as you can see, these actually have abilities on them. In total, they have three. They are very powerful. And I do have some battle logs to show you. Um, now, let's start off with the firing pattern of these. Because this is why I've been emphasizing that particle beam delay. So, it has five kinetic weapons, all firing two shots each. And these fire every single round. Yes, every single round. That is basically the equivalent in one round of 10 photon torpedoes smacking your ship. Now, the best tactic around these ones is to bring as much firepower to bear on them because of one ship ability. This one here. They, their weapons pass through your shields. Go through the battle logs and we'll show you. So, as much firepower as you can bring to bear on these things. The other two abilities are here. So, basically reducing your critical damage by 500% for two rounds. And it does stack. Which can literally zero out your critical damage. Even that 500%. If you, if you cannot muster more than 500% damage. That is it. It is zeroed. Um... And then as well, at the end of every single round, as you saw from the firing pattern, there it is again. That energy weapon for number six fires six shots each. And these are lethal. One shot will blow you up. Unless you are <coughs> the G uh, G6 player with a level 70, a level 70 player, let's put. Level 70 with a G6 epic, which is tier 18, level 90, all components done. Right, it you'll probably survive three shots and then you're dead, yeah, because it fires 600 
billion sh power shots in total shot. 100 billion each shot. But again, we'll show you that in the battle logs. So this is why we're saying about that pra that particle beam delay. Make sure you get it because it will push it back to respectively level one. It will push it back to round three. Level two, it will push it back to level uh, round five. And round level three will push back to level seven. So basically, you can go potential maximum seven rounds before you are beaten. If you cannot beat this target by the end of your firing pattern in round seven, so check your, your fire pattern. If you cannot defeat these hostiles by the end of your firing pattern, this thing will finish you off. Now, the chances are, depending on what ship you got, you might only see the first two shots in round seven of the Zindi hostile, and then the remaining um, five, the remaining three kinetics will just damage you before blowing you up with a big gun. Or if you've got four weapons, you can go as far down as the fourth um, Zindi weapon, maybe even the fifth Zindi weapon before it fires, and then that big gun shoots you. So you must kill it before the end of of the round of your firing pattern. At the end of your firing pattern in that round. Let me get it the right way around. So, that's them. Now, I showed you that screenshot of the Orion Corvette. Yeah, I, I went silly. I did try an uncommon, uh, level 28 uncommon, maxed out level 45. For me, running 5 million power, sadly, she did not um, survive. So let's jump into the battle logs and show you off these uh, various different things. So here we go. Oh, here we go. It's definitely these. This is I record, record, doing record, and join this, and yeah, mess it up. So let me have a look. Zindi forty two defeat. Here we go. So let's have a look at this defeat. This was. Oh no, okay. This was the Newton. Yes, we will talk about crewing for these in a minute. I just want to um, go over the battle. Log. Here we go. That's the one. Level 40. Defeat, defeat, defeat. So we'll take this first one here. Here we go. Saladin running PMT. I lost. And I lost because of this um, seventh round weapon. And if we just get to round seven. So as you can see, that Saladin has two weapons. It has that big gun and it has an NG weapon. So literally, the Zindi weapon fires in round seven. I shoot back with a big gun. Then it shoots me, then I fire my phaser, and then the remaining three weapons attack me before... Oh, actually, they finished me off before the big gun. But I guarantee you, if I if it not destroyed me here, the next shot was that big gun. It was going to be that big gun. Um, but actually, I do have the Gladius, who did actually manage to go all that way. Um, I think it's that one there. Yep, here we go. Gladius, same crew, went even further on its hull. So, I don't know why I just did that. Let's click that. Get through the rounds a little bit faster. And then, Gladius's fire pa pattern finishes. Here it is. Bring it level with me. This one right here, 1 billion. Now, as you can see as well, look at the one below. You do mitigate a lot of damage. You do mitigate at least whatever that is max mitigation but it's still not enough because that's still 28 billion going to my hull yeah 28 billion not a cat in hell's chance of surviving that one now could i have actually blown this thing up sooner yes however let's move myself into where i normally be what we need to do is we need to find a critical shot here we go right here this is that ship's ability of reducing your critical damage by 500% or 1,000. I'm gone. If I had actually fired that shot, and if we actually look at the shot... Uh, no, let's go to the next shot. 975,000, that shot. I can't remember if that's a kinetic or... I think that's a kinetic. But if I was been able to fire that, and we go back out of this, that would never have survived. However, I fired a number of critical shots, which literally means I went all the way to round seven. So the idea is literally no critical damage. Now, it's not critical damage per se. You lose the critical damage, but it's not the critical damage per se that actually 
causes it to go to zero. It's actually your critical chance. So if we bring it in line with me, critical chance, that is the Gladius's natural critical chance. So no matter what, there is always going to be a risk of critical damage. You all, there's always going to be a risk of you firing a critical shot, which will, which is supposed to do critical damage. However, it's made worse by the fact we have various researches and artifacts towards improving critical chance, which if you don't do them, it's going to affect other areas of your game. In fact, it's going to affect 95% of your game. Because literally, with the amount of content in the game at the minute, this makes up about 5%. Literally, that's it. That's just an educated guess. I don't actually know the numbers. But, those artifacts and that research inflate that and give you that bigger chance. So effectively, I'm probably running more of a 20% critical chance. But there is one way you can control it from your end. And that comes down to officers. Yes, so now we're going to move on to crewing. So I've got a number of crews lined up for you. And what I'm going to do is just return the Discovery home because obviously I'm going to need him as well. So the first one we're going to look at is, um, believe it or not, actually is on the Discovery. Is this one here. Now, I'm not going to recommend this crew at all. But... Yes, you can damn it. Now, in 20 seconds, we'll be able to delve deeper into this crew. But ideally, the captain's ability for Harry Mudd here is a 40% chance to raise your shield mitigation. Now, that is a wasted uh, feature. That is a waste. Because if you remember, these things fire straight through your shields. And we'll call up another battle log just to prove it. Because that's the one thing I hadn't actually covered yet. So... Uh, freebooters and Zindi. So we'll just click on this one. Battle log. Yes, I went three rounds. Move, move me across. There you go. First weapon here. As you can see, that ability, which we pointed out first of all, goes straight through your shields. So you've got your mitigation. So basically, we'll, say, we'll take that down to 800,000, right? So 800,000 shots. I'm mitigating 500,000. So I am rounding. You can see the figures but I'm rounding to make it easier to explain. So I'm mitigating 500,000 from that 800,000, leaving 300,000. Isolated damage, you can totally forget about because one, it's not firing, and two, yeah, it's just not there. Next up, that out of that 300,000, right, you would be losing, um, you'd lose 80% of that through the shields. So that's roughly around about... Uh, blah, 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 do, 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 240,000, right? Round using my, my rounded figures, 240,000 would be going to the shields with the remaining 60,000 going into the hole. No, <clears throat> this thing's firing is um, 800,000 shot. I'm mitigating 500,000, the remaining 300,000, all of it straight to the hole. So that is. Is the shield that is the shield bypass system, and this is why I say Harry Mud is a, actually a complete and utter waste of a captain's ability. But he is there because you obviously won't be using him for his officer's ability. You will be using him for this. His below deck, eight hundred twenty-three ways to die has a forty percent chance to double your shots in the first round. Getting double shots in that first round is vitally important because it inflicts more damage. And like I said, this is about damage, 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 through and through. So, right, so we'll leave that there. Next up is Harrison, ignoring shields, so the opponent's shields. So, absolutely, again, more damage to hull, okay? Absolutely essential. Now, if you really wanted to, you could actually put Harrison in charge and... Literally just put him, put them on a battleship and go up against the explorers. As you can see, Harrison has a 20% uh, damage increase. If you went full synergy, that would actually be a lot stronger. I can't remember what the synergy is, um, but it would be a lot stronger. So you could do it that way. Next one is part of the, um, tr the tr off triad officers, Kang, Marcus and Charvenek. 
use them against the respect the respected classes so in this case with chang it would be the interceptor marcus will be against an explorer and sharvnik against a battleship using this ability stack making sure the stats below deck are right and applying more damage well actually no it's, uh, what's this one improving your accuracy so making sure that you're going to hit that interceptor not a problem not necessarily increasing your damage but it's actually reju um, in decreasing the mitigation of the interceptor if i'm right if i'm not please let me know please put it in the comment section down below so you've got that crew now i'm not going to tip that one that one is the best one i probably would go more with this one now you would have noticed that i put pike on the side and if we just put pike in command again for a minute fight shield mitigation your shield mitigation now obviously he can go up as high as 14 percent but again your shields are useless against these things so a waste of a captain's ability in my opinion his below deck ability however absolutely decreasing the hostile shield mitigation so now obviously this is stacked by his own tier obviously mine's tier three i think so i've got 20 percent mitigation absolutely definitely worth it captain for this uh, loadout is una 300 percent now she's a flat 100 percent she's a flat 100 percent unless you put synergy with her in which case you're going to get 300 damage absolutely can't deny it worth absolutely getting so and as, then there's a byproduct with una if you actually have una you've got an impulse speed increase well mine's tier one my una is tier one so yeah next one for this loadout will be one of the rare officers you know you you want them for their officers ability only their captain's abilities all three of them is crit chance and i will explain why we don't need that you've already got an idea from what I said so far but we're going to explain it even further crit chance uh, increasing mitigation of your ship against a specific class from a specific class so in this case with um ahura is on an interceptor against battleship so pretty much like your borg probe grinding um, she is maxed, so she's got she's showing off maxed, but absolutely not. It's not to be honest. This low doubt is not one I'm going to turn my nose up. It's probably definitely going to be my third my third option. Now, um, next crew, which does actually become second, first or second. Yes, I did say first or second because it depends on how. Um, depends on what you do i mean i can literally show you the fact that this crew is not the best um when i find them there we go pike moreau talan or pike moreau kath because they both got the same ability which is reducing kinetic damage from your opponent like i said these 40 plus ships have five kinetic weapons firing two shots each so taking that damage down is absolutely vital for your survival the longer you can survive the better however again you still need to deal the damage using um, pike's captain's ability which is increasing um officer um abilities by uh, by 40 percent with moreau makes it 80 percent at 120 percent and then obviously you've got moreau's um Reduction in piercing stats by hostiles by 70, so going up to 150%. So this is like this is your full mi max mitigation. Full mitigation, maximum mitigation. So definitely worth going after. Um next and then finally is the crew that I predominantly run. And I need to just actually throw them in because they're not on deck at the minute. Uh, max loot so this is the max loot crew as i like to call it so as you can see enterprise e picard with his ability to increase um loot by 60 percent data on the other side will add an extra 40 so that's going to make 100 percent seven of both of them have got isolated damage below deck so extra damage being delivered five of 11's officer ability increasing loot you see the pattern that's going here it's about increasing the amount of loot you saw those 34s 
one. The 35s, three. Yeah, so it's all about increasing loot. Then coupled with that Cindy Escalation uh, favor, you're gonna get more. Then I've got the Doctor. Increasing resources by 15%. So there's more. The new turn itself is a level 46 rare, <coughs> G4 rare. Natural ship's ability is increasing loot. In total, I'm taking, with this loadout, I'm taking um, a 235% increase to loot. Yeah. So it does have any be beneficials. Um, now below deck, depending on the class of ship you'll use, you can, I would recommend using the Voyager loadouts. Except, <laughs> actually, well, yeah, you can still use it because obviously the states activate isolated damage on a specific ship. So for the for the Newton battleship, burning um, interceptors like your Pylum or your Saladin, isolated will be hull breach, and then morale for the explorers. So. Yeah, you still can use them. Other than that, whole breach in general is actually useless, a complete enough to waste time, unless you have those critical damage flaws maxed out. So, next up as well, below deck, as you can see, I've got Mariner and I've got Tindy, increasing my weapon damage and my hull health respectively. Basically, dealing more damage, bang, 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 more hull, whoa, not coming through. So, yeah, there we go. So that's the loadout that I would highly recommend that you do run. This is my top loadout. And why do I actually say that? Well, the reason I say that is we've got to go back to the battle logs. Because we've got a shot. Now, before we actually go into these battle logs a little bit more, is, um, they're not the ones, are they? Here we go, they're the ones. So before we go into them a little bit further, this announcement here, basically, Scope, we've noticed that um, players are hitting or the punching down on hostiles rather than trying to hit their own level or punching up, which has usually been the staple in the game. Me, I'm an Ops 47 player. I've recently learned I can take on 50, level 53 hostiles in faction space, not a problem. That's six levels above me. Yeah, six levels above me. So my Newton's really packing a punch. But these things, because of that big particle beam, they're not punching, they, they can't. They can't punch up. But players are noticing that hitting your own level, which is what Scopely want you to do. They, they want you to like flight. So me being Ops 46, they want me to hit level 46 hostiles. Uh, sorry, I'm 47. So they want me to hit 46 or 48 hostiles. Well, as you can see, I've got a couple of defeats against 46s, and I'll show you what crews I was running for that one. And the only victory. So, this is why I put the crews. So, play, so players are punching down. I will put, as you've seen further up the list, I went and punched a load of um, 42s. That's, four, that's five levels below me. But it was more efficient, loot-wise, for me to do that. So... Now, if we actually look at this one then, here's the crew I'm running, Pike, Moreau, Talan, punching at the same level. And this thing's got the same strength as me, give or take. And we went seven rounds and put myself back in the middle. And what I can tell you now, what caused this was a large number of critical shots. So there's one, two, three, Any more? Four. Five. Six. So six critical shots. Now, if I now, like I said, it's the natural um, crit chance. That's procced those critical shots. So if I'd not procced one of them, well, just one. If I'd not procced just one, I would have actually beaten this and I wouldn't have got to this stage. Yeah. So, yes, they are a decent crew. They are a decent loadout. No questions about it. 
but it comes down to your natural crit chance. And as well, just so you're aware, below deck, I was running the exact same loadout below deck, what I've just showed you. Neelix, Doctor, Mariner, Tindy. Notice one officer, one PVE below deck officer who's not there. Hugh. Because, obviously, Hugh procs critical chance and gives you that progressive increase to the point where you're going to end up with max. Now, the crew that I was running, surprise, surprise, that actually beat these things. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to get to view that log because for some reason the game doesn't want to actually load anything. So I've tried a couple of times to get into that battle log and it just went, oh, fine, it's moving. <clears throat> So I'm going to give you one more try to get, if we actually get in there to go to battle log. If not, I'm just going to put it up on screen. If I started, then this would. But anyway, Hugh, basically his below deck ability is to increase your critical chance. So you saw the natural um, critical chance of that Gladius at 12%. That is an average. Like I said, you've, you've got research, you've got artifacts that also increase it. So it's giving that natural ability critical chance. Officers like Hugh, Khan, increase your critical chance. Gorkun, as a captain, his captain's ability is critical chance. So anything that boosts your critical chance is a big no. Do not put them on your ship. They are, they will not benefit you in the slightest. In fact, they will make things worse for you. The last thing you want to be doing is doing max critical chance. That's a critical shot every round, you're firing nothing. Instead of me firing a phaser straight at you, I'm sending it off that way, or it just goes boop. Yeah, so, but anyway, it looks like we're having some right uh, technical difficulties here while recording this. So let's see if we can get into that battle log. Um, do, 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 here we go. Right, so he's going to load. Hey, he's going to load this time, thank God. So, as you can see, I'm running max loot, but I did win. But I took a lot of damage. That's 66% of my hull. 66%. Yeah, I'm not getting another good shot at that. But what I got out of it was some Zindi scraps, 580. This was around about 147. Yeah, 147. I walked away 580. However, I'm not doing two. I'm not doing two kills at least. So, early in the video, I showed you how much, how many scraps I need. I need 2,000 per day. So ultimately, is this a five-minute grind? No, it's not. If I wanted to kill the hostiles at my level, no, it's not. However, if I want to go kill the lower-level hostiles, we'll go here. This last one before I was destroyed. I took multiple out and I walked away with over a thousand. So I could do that in two runs. That is actually acceptable. And that, you could just keep it in the five minute grind if you remove travel time. Now, yes, you can use your discovery if you want to, but you're gonna burn through mycelium, like there's no tomorrow, which means you're gonna to have to mine more mycelium, which is an active mining, because it takes like 50 seconds for me with a discovery. So a complete and utter waste of time. But is it a five minute grind ultimately? No, it's not. Literally, even with that um, Zindi Escalation favor maxed out, I still do not think this is gonna be a, f a five minute grind. Now, if you can find a way to get, let's just say for argument's sake, the 2000 in one run, I probably could do it in the level 40s. Well, now I'm punching several levels down. So it comes over, what's more effective? More, killing more hostiles for ultimately, potentially less loot. You might be able to do it depending on your critical shots or go all out with the max loot and walk away with less kills. So hang on, yeah, less kills, but more loot. So the, the choice is entirely yours. But anyway, that is the Zindi grind with the five minute loop and the expansion to the Xbox Faction Store. Let me know what you think in the comment section down, uh, down below. Until then, I'm Admiral Pegasus. Don't forget to smash that like button on the way out. Stay safe, live long and prosper, and I shall catch you on the next video.
Goodbye.